So I like watching other video game pickup channels like Retro Rick, Phoenix Resell, Sid Cooper, all of them cool cats. Now here's the thing, we have a couple different opinions about them. Uh, in this video, we're gonna have a conversation between myself, Hyphy Gold, and Gag Cognac, and we're gonna discuss some of the pickups that they have and some of the practices that they do. Now this is all respectfully, this are not only just critiques, but this is stuff that we like about them. Um, and we also talk about a little bit about our own channels. So hopefully you guys enjoy this and here we go. All right, guys, welcome back. So we're here again with the crew. We're going to talk about something a little bit different today, and that is our reactions to some of the YouTubers that are out there. Now, collectors, resellers, some of these characters that are out there are um, do things differently that we may do. And we also have some similarities in the sense where uh, we go out hunting for video games. Now, whether we resell them or we keep them part of the collection or we grade them, are different aspects of the collecting scene. So we're gonna just have a little bit of conversation and kind of reactions as to some of what our fellow YouTubers do on their channel. And, you know, kind of either A, criticize in a, in a way where maybe they could have done this better or B, learn from some of the stuff that they might mention. So that's kind of what I want to get to. And actually this is some, somewhat of a response a bit to Mr. Gat Cognac's last video, where he talks about some of this in depth with another collector who's not a YouTuber, but another collector. So you kind of see their point of view. And this time around, we're going we're gonna to kind of talk about it amongst ourselves. And you guys can kind of get a, an idea as to what our thoughts are on this. And just know, you know, we're also um, fellow lovers of the video game world and, you know, not just video games, but cartoons, animes and whatnot. So we kind of have our own perspective on this. You know, each one of us, Ivy Gold, Gag Cognac, Pig flip myself we all kind of just think about this in different ways and we just kind of share these thoughts and ideas on a regular basis so we kind of wanted to put it on a video and just have that conversation for you guys to kind of uh check out and look after so you know let's start it off guys i mean uh so as we look at one of some of these youtubers like let's just say phoenix resell he mainly concentrates on reselling the games that he and that he purchased that's that's his forte that's what he's trying to go for is to make you know profit you know we we see some of these YouTubers um, that purchase these games and try to resell them at uh, the price that's currently right now or inflating it or trying to maybe even hype up the games that are they're collecting or finding in order to boost up the price of it. Now, this can work at people's advantage or it can actually affect them. And, you know, it's twofold. And I think really, in my opinion, there's a twofold answer to these and opinions um, about whether reselling like this is good or bad. I think it's like a yin and yang, man, living together. I start kind of thinking, okay, at to what point are we gonna kind of allow people to bump up the value of these items so much? Up to what point are we gonna kind of interfere and say like, hey man, this is a little bit too much. And I think that's up to the buyer. Um, if you don't if you don't think Pokemon Crystal is worth a hundred bucks, don't buy it at a hundred bucks, plain and simple. You know, you either go find it at a garage sale, you go find it at Goodwill, which I doubt, or you go find it in places like that other than buying it online. You wanna, you, I think we ourselves push the value up of these games, aside from maybe YouTubers uh, bringing it up and uh, hyping up the game. Uh, just like how we did a video on video games that we think might be going up. You know, we're, you know, I, I will gonna speak for myself. I'm a small time YouTuber, you know, I appreciate the people who subscribe and I like making videos with you guys. I like making videos, period. So I don't think I have an influence at all. But the last game that I talked about was Asura's Wrath. I think the PlayStation 3 games are just going up, period. Now, if I had an influence on Asura's Wrath going up in price, you know, like, am I going to apologize to um, bringing out a cool game that I wanted to other people to play? You know, you know, like thousands of people I played it, but kind of maybe... A, a couple hundred didn't know about it and the price goes up is that my fault um is that something that you know i should blame myself for it um so these are kind of things that i think about when i do youtube and when i see other youtube uh sellers online so Gek, what's your ideas on it man um, nah like you, you don't have to apologize for that video because 
I always like my main thing is I don't have a problem with, you know, reselling or resellers and this and that. I'm not as hardcore as my boy, you know, like where he's just like, fuck them all. Right. Yeah. I, I just question the authenticity, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like I have like my reasons of, you know, like, let's just say Trap Gunner. Right. Like, you know, nobody knows that game. You know, damn right. Nobody knows the game. And the game was like around the $40 mark when I mentioned it. Yeah. yeah this guy's over here cornering the market. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but, you know, like we look online now as a hundred bucks. How do you explain that? Did somebody just decide to go look up all the Atlas games and be like, all Atlas games should be worth that much? Or I don't know. Did somebody watch our video? I can't tell you that. But the main thing is, it's like, <laughs> if you look at PS3 right now, right? Yes, they're closing down the stores. They're doing all that stuff. And it's causing like, you know, uh, Hyphy showed me like there's a Facebook group that's like going like, oh shit, like this is going up. Like we got to like, bump up these prices blah 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 and like everyone is doing it and to the point where it's like why is there why is a ratchet and clank game 99 wow. you know i get it that's like one of the last ones that came out and all but yeah. that it ain't no madden 12 you know <laughs> like why y'all treating like why are you treating like all these games that you guys didn't even pay attention to before like it's gold you know i can name a couple of games that's not even like in these guys radars but it's like the pump is artificial. That's what I, 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 I question. It's like, nah, dude, you know, it's not fundamentally correct. Like Pokemon is the same thing. Why, why did it double in a month's time? Yeah. Like, a, a soul silver, you know, like I sold one for like 90 bucks. Now you got to pay like 175, 200, you know, for, for, a, for, for a cart, <laughs> like, yeah, for a loose copy. And it's like, where, where did that come from? So it's like, I don't have a problem with like, cause we all do it. Like we all have to like flip the games to get what we want. Even if you're not a reseller or, you know, just a collector in general, that that's normal. But at the point where like some people are trying to just hoard and then freaking create a false market, that's wrong to me. You know, it's like, why, why do you gotta do that, man? You know, like, like, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always going to be people that are have the fear of missing out and that, you know, collecting that happens a lot. You, me, everyone is like guilty. Like we're like, oh, man, I want to go nowhere. I got to get it. I got to get the cool on. I got to get whatever you got to get your anime games, whatever it is, because, you know, you've had that on your list and you're like, now nah, I got to buy it because it's going up, you know, and and it's like I, I can't treat it like a stock because I know all stocks come back down. Mm -hmm. but in the games there's a limited amount you know yeah. so it's it's different but yeah that's that's my take on it yeah and that, that makes sense i mean the other theory that that can be out there is that you know we notice a spike in entertainment going up especially with video games you know during the i think the coronavirus the pandemic you know really created this inflation because people were stuck more inside so they were playing more games you know, there's conversations about this already, but, you know, right. people are staying at home more, playing more. So they're going online and saying, hey, I'm nostalgic for these games, maybe watching YouTube. And they happen to see, uh, let's say, Retro Rick or they happen to see, uh, you know, Sick Cooper and his, you know, sick, sick, awesome, you know, store, which is pretty cool. But, you know, things yeah. like that, that kind of sparks this like this, this little bug in you and says, like, hey, man, like, you remember this game you used to play blood omen 2 on the playstation 2 you know go grab it you know so i i think there's like a multi-factor a reason why games have been going up and the authenticity you're right the authenticity behind it you know that's that's very true that's that's a topic on its own like you know is someone like i say like you know hoarding 20 pokemon silvers and just holding them until the value goes up or kind of the hype goes up and they just start kind of you know selling them at a, at a such a high rate going back to hyphy's um example of pokemon if you look at right now uh any walmart or heb you won't find any pokemon cards period i've gone to multiple walmart or heb and i've looked for cards you know because i want to do an um you know unboxing of a pack or something like that for the channel and have myself some cards 
you know, because I kind of do like having a binder of cards of Pokemon. You know, if I find something rare, I'll, I kind of keep it and it's pretty fun. And actually something I do with my son and stuff, right? And mm -hmm. I think about it, I'm like, man, like, dude, like, you know, me and my son, we go and we're like, bro, like, we can't find anything. Like, we go and we go to yeah. Walgreens and we ask him, like, we can't find nothing. Like, what's going on? Like, you know, this is selling out so much and, you know, people are, you go online and you buy packs. They're like our three dollars retail. You find them for 15, 20 bucks. You're like, man, what's going on? And that's where it comes to play where where it affects people and it's kind of upsetting. But then, you know, I might fall too. I might fall in the sense where I bought, if you look at my video, I bought the mystery boxes from Walgreens. I bought all of them. Uh, and I bought all of them and I resold quite a bit of them. And I opened about four of them. And these mystery boxes were really, really in demand. So I kind of I have this sense where I'm this duality. It's like, man, like I bought these Pokemon mystery boxes. I bought all of them. Um, I wanted to open most of them. But then, you know, I said, you know what? Just resell them at a, at a, at a certain price so that way I can get these recoup my cash and maybe make a little bit of profit to buy more games or more cards or whatnot. So I have that kind of dual sense in me um, about that. And I made a video about it. Um, you know, and that's one of the highest, you know, videos of uh, views that I have on a video. It's a thousand four hundred, which, you know, I know I'm, I'm a small YouTube, but that's kind of big for me. Um, so, you know, this duality sense of where I'm a reseller or a collector or, or, you know, what, how much of an influence that I might have or how much of an effect I should put it more, um, in better words, how much of an effect do I have when I go buy, uh, when I went to go buy all those Pokemon cards. So, you know, man, it goes, it kind of goes both ways. And I'm trying to think like, you know, what, how can I be more responsible when it comes to kind of like, uh, picking up on the hunts, video games, most of the time myself, when I go pick up, it's because I want to keep it for my collection or trade it. That's most of the time for myself. And there's nothing wrong with reselling it neither. It's just that, how are you saying that artificial inflation, man, when I went to go hoard those Pokemon mystery boxes. I'm thinking like, damn, I did do that. So, you know, it kind of goes, it kind of goes back and forth. I, I want to add some. All right. Um, cool. So yeah, after after you know dropping the video that I dropped, you know, and I was like, I was like expecting all types of people to just trash my ass for the video, right? <laughs> and I was ready, you know, guns was cocked, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, but. The, the it was very surprising and even like the movie was telling me that nah, i think a lot of people are gonna like take your side and all that so i was reading a lot of comments and it was really a lot of like good constructive comments i'm not sure if i can find the comment but basically there was one guy that had um even had said you know man you know like i was you know i pretty much re resold and especially back in the shoe days and all that stuff i, I did all that stuff too and you know, yeah, it was cool flipping for like, you know, extra 50, 80, 100 bucks, whatever. But he was like, yeah, but now it's got to a point where like, why, why the hell are like these regular, you know, I don't know how much dunks cost nowadays, but back then they were like 80 bucks, right? Yeah. I'm talking about Nike shoes and all that. And like, why the hell are these shoes like going for 300? Those were like, like a cut above Converse's back in the days, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it had, it had him even like question himself. So, it was kind of cool that it kind of actually like makes people kind of reflect on, you know, what exactly is going on instead of just going like, oh, shit, this is hype shit, blah, 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 and, and trying to jump on the train. So then that's more of like what I wanted to do is, you know, have some constructive criticism, you know, have everybody look at it before you go and just be like, you just a hating ass bitch, you know, <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, it's easy to freaking hate. You know, but like everyone has their, you know, little value of how, you know, especially like I said, it, it's a culture like collecting is a culture, yeah. reselling is a culture. Now it's kind of a cross in between, but there is a clash. So at that point, I just want to wanted to put it out there that, you know, it's it's hard doing this without stepping on each other's toes. And, and and sometimes you know some people got those bunions man you can't be stepping that hard they can be getting hurt <laughs> you know i'm saying right but you gotta mind the toes <laughs> when you're doing it so makes sense man. makes sense yeah that's a good point man. 
Um, Can I add something? Yeah. I feel like um, a lot of these content creators, they're, I don't, like, I think not their initial, I don't think their initial intent was to, like, disrespect folks, like, with what they're doing, whether it's collecting or reselling. But I think it's just, especially if you have a big following, there should be some sort of responsibility that you're not disparaging a group or like you're not disrespecting like a, a whole culture because I feel like there is some sort of disrespect indirectly that they don't realize that they're doing mm-hmm. in some of their videos, um, whether it's something that they say in their video or whether it's like the thumbnail or the title that could be off-putting um i obviously that's probably just to get views but still i mean all right so we got retro rick on here this is his latest video gta eh. ratchet i don't, I don't like okay, i got so a reason why i kind of stopped watching his stuff because I, I don't see any good pickups <laughs> that's just what did he- like on that table right now that we see we are only seeing the only thing that's actually worth value was that that Mario title. It's sealed, right? That one? And it's sealed. And that's the reason why it's probably worth money because it's sealed. Because, I mean, shoot, that's a Nintendo Selects title, right? Hey, I remember that Walkman. I remember that uh, CD player back in the day. That one costed <laughs> like $80 back then. Yeah, I remember going to the Wiz and seeing that shit. <laughs> I'd be like, fuck. Yeah, that was a lot of <laughs> Circuit City type shit. I think it's Tenkaichi. I don't know if that's how you it. Like this is what I'm saying. He was saying that his competition <laughs> missed the valuable gains, but he himself yeah. missed the most valuable game <laughs> in the lot. I was when I first saw this, I was tripping out. I was like, "What are you talking about, bro? Like you, you got second picks, anyways. Like, why is he trying to disparage like the other competition trying to get games when he yeah. himself missed yeah. out on the best game there?" The other games. If I did Cause that game is like already almost two hundred dollars for that. Yeah, like, and at the same time, like, who gives a fuck about you know your competition and all that? You don't see me going out and be like, oh man, I, I didn't get it because this guy beat me to it. Blah blah. You know, like, come on. No, this is just some I mean, the rest of the titles he's got GTA, which has been released so many times. Um and he had what is that you said the ratchet like there was not much value of reselling the rest for me i don't think i would pick that lot up even for that price hmm. um because i wouldn't even want the other games to resell in general well like, look, um, let's look at forza motorsport unless you want that game to play yeah what are you gonna get for that that's a two dollar <laughs> 99 game <laughs> i bought it recently at goodwill but i wanted it you know yeah but so, not to resell that. Yeah, like I don't get that aspect, man. And and I critique that on a lot of, you know, people that do these videos. Like look, Vietcom, that's a piece of crap game, man. You know, I can't like, mess I can't mess that. with the Shrek games. Shrek with third. What's up with that? You know, it's like why? The WWE game right there, the SmackDown game is probably the only one that has some value because, you know, it's it's a growing thing. People are getting back yeah. into it. Even yeah. I go back and watch WWF videos back in the days now every once in a while. So Oh man. It would have been better if it was Here Comes the Pain. <laughs> yeah. So some but, toys some toys can like, you know, go up can get you a lot of cash, but you just I don't know about the toys. Some dog bit the hell out of that thing. I, Things chewed up. I wouldn't get yeah. that. And, and <laughs> With, he no, picks some weird shit, bro. Like he makes some yeah. weird stuff. Yeah. And the thing with Retro Rick, we gotta keep in mind that he's a type that, you know, his his thing is is uh, what is it, collecting for it's an era. The 90s it's a nineties really. You know, it's a nineties. I get it. I get it. So that trolls, you know, to him, you know. Here, see. Is this is this dude? He okay? He's got a nice display. I'm not gonna lie. He's got a nice display, yeah. but like. I don't know. Does he, does he ever does he ever play games? Nope. I feel like, man, he's got all the Fantastics. Yeah, he's got he's got a pretty good collection, man. I mean, Retrowork has got some good collection. I mean, most of the YouTubers. Well, I say most because the other person that we're we're gonna kind of discuss real quick, um, the collection. Like, what kind of collection do they have? 
and this is just something that like we go back i kind of go back and forth on myself i'm like thinking like you know am i gonna judge this guy because of his collection or or the game that he plays but does he state that he's a gamer or not you know and i'm not gonna lie he probably retro rick has more better pickups than i do in my opinion but then i see you guys you guys get awesome pickups too um so but you know it, it all kind of varies sometimes i get decent pickups sometimes i don't and this pickup i don't know if i would have paid 45 for it man but you know if, shit, if that's what makes him kind of happy i guess but i don't know if i would actually pay 45 for this this pickup here. you can that like how you were saying that wrestling game they are going up in price um yeah they are yeah Shrek. And, but rightfully so though because yeah i grew up in that era attitude era was like the best all yeah. right that shit was fun hell that shit yeah was real That's fun every kid wanted to do you know? like whenever you did a finisher you know you want to lay the smack down you're like okay you about yep. to get this elbow bitch <laughs> yeah and you know that at the end of it he does tally up how much he made or how much his um foreseeable profit is and that's something that we all as collectors and resellers or traders we take that into consideration and we think like how much am i going to really make up so he paid I was thinking 45, but maybe it was just from the pickup and he added some stuff from the Goodwill. I haven't seen this. Episode. Yeah, it looks like there's Goodwill. But from what the, I saw, it should have been like that yeah. right side of the table, I think, <laughs> is what he picked up. It's, it seems like that side was the stuff, like Deadlock for Ratchet and then the other Ratchet game and then the disc only oh, GTA. You, you, know, you know what this tells me, though, right? This just tells me that his Goodwill is getting ransacked because everyone out there is doing it now. Mm -hmm. A lot of yeah there's no more wii sports in there man yeah. <laughs> no more mario karts well at least that's a benefit of this video that we don't see wii sports or mario kart in this video <laughs> i mean those, those i mean well those up. are the only things that have value though at this point so if we're looking oh. about it on a flipping aspect there ain't much to go by unless he goes and zooms in on that no mercy and I don't know if you guys know about this. If that No Mercy cart is one of those ones that got um, recalled because there was a bunch of glitches and they fixed it back. There's only probably like a couple hundred out there. That one's worth like probably five, six hundred bucks. It's a non-revision one. It, yeah, it has to say USA plus one. If it doesn't say that, you don't get jack for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I put it out there That's right now. Cool, yeah. That's pretty cool. I didn't know about that one. I mean, it's kind of like that. <laughs> I'm to look at the No Mercies now, man. <laughs> so yeah, when you look at No Mercies, make sure it says USA plus one. If you got that one, that's a golden piece. It's a grail. People all pay. right, all right, bet. Good tips, man. Um, yeah. So, uh, what'd you guys have about this? Would you guys have? I mean, he's foreseen about two eighty. That's pretty good value. So the thing is, that's gross that's gross that's not that's not what you're going to take home that's you're not considering the time how much you're going to yeah, get out of it about like 190 out of that the shipping and everything that you're going to do and the time that it takes so but then again this is his part of the collection that he considers and, and a lot of people are kind of copying this too uh where you what is it called the ten dollar game collection and oh then, yeah remember so this is this is part of his series about ten dollar game collection so you know, this is the part where he starts with ten dollars, and the whole point of it is just trying to flip, 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 and get more into more value into his collection, so he can spend more on valuable games eventually. So, I, I don't know if I can too much. Ah oh, man, I, you know like, what's your collection? What's your collection? Does your collection consist of this? No. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, like we were having discussions before of like oh are you are you really the type that are a completionist i know some folks are completionists like there are certain sets that you can actually complete but like how many games for the ps2 man like, like is he thousand. is he trying to is he trying to complete the ps2 set i don't think so but like he's filling it with a bunch of filler and there's i mean like okay i get like he's some i i'm subscribed to him and uh um he does say that he picks up some games for his for his kids yeah that's okay but yeah. then there's some titles in there that it's real questionable. I'm like, why are you picking this up for the collection? You're not going to flip this because if you try to flip it, you're not going to be able to flip it. There are some titles that's just going to sit there forever because it's just straight garbage. Like nobody wants it. Um, Out of this lot, I would have kept the All-Stars for myself, for my collection because it's sealed All-Stars. We, right? Mm -hmm. 
that's me. And then I would have, if I would have gotten this, I would have flipped the rest. I would have attempted to flip the rest, but honestly, like, I don't, I can't, I can't see this going pretty quick on eBay. I see nah. that if I bundle it up. Yeah. PS2, well, you got to look at his wall. You know, <laughs> you know how much games are still there from like three years ago that <laughs> hasn't been yeah, sold. And, it's like, and the other stuff is hard. And He's not really reselling it either. And then, we also got to look at like the other the other factors we got to look at is like have you guys and i've done and i'm guilty of it have you guys ever picked up like a lot just to pick up a lot because either a you want to have something like already because it's been so dry or b because you're like hey maybe it can fit into a content uh it's part of the youtube i've i've done that before and mm. I'm, yeah, yeah I, I know what you mean by the desperation pickups because like i have those like you see when I pick up some stray ones and stuff. So I'll build up all the stray ones into one big old pile yeah. and then I'll slap that out there and be like, all right, this is what I picked up as a, you know. In summer, yeah, that's what he did nice. basically in this video too. Oh, like, yeah, I think that maybe that's it. Or also because let's just say I have a ton of stuff. I'm like, man, I can trade this. I can sell it. But I'm like, you know, when I'm when I'm working full time or whatever, I'm like, damn, bro, it just takes so much time, you know, and the kids or whatnot. I think there's just a lot of factors that play into what reselling and collecting are. Um, but yeah, I've done that. Like like videos where I go pick up stuff that's like, man, maybe I shouldn't have picked this up or I've lost out in the end. Um, you know, I'm gonna have a video coming up at one point where I've, I've lost out because, you know, my lack of knowledge is certain things. So, I mean, you know, for 70 bucks, at the end of it, I would have kept Super Mario All-Stars and I would have just tried to bundle the rest and sold it off and try to sell off the rest uh, bundling is the key like like i like you know i like hyphy when he's over here like snatching up 30 dollar ps2s oh and, yeah and shit like that because oh, like yeah. like for during christmas time that's how i got rid of a lot of my crap was i bought a crap ton of wii's you know and then because i was getting so much wii games that came with it that's how you like get rid of the stuff and you get rid of it quick and I was selling it in person and I didn't sell it for much. If I buy like a $30 Wii with a bunch of games and stuff, I'd sell it back for like 75. I didn't care. You know, mm. I'm not going to do no Phoenix resale, put up at 250 and try to gouge some mamas and shit like that. Fuck that. You know, <laughs> I, I don't, I still don't get it. Like people are just paying that much for a Wii on Amazon is crazy. I mean, you know, he pays yeah, more than 30 bucks like, for a Wii though. Like 250 <laughs> was the initial price when it first came out. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know the whole Wii situation is kind of like, yeah, it's kind of. He said he, said he paid 70 for this whole lot re retro, yeah. but like, I, would, I wouldn't pay 70 for that lot of stuff. I mean, he even though that was a course of but a week. That's, uh, yeah, that's like Goodwill and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Man, I just, I know what you mean about the 70. Like, in my aspect, I don't know what I would, okay, honestly, I would pay maybe, and I know you guys probably wouldn't even agree with this, maybe 50, maybe. Some people even to not, collect, uh, even to collect, you would spend that. Maybe just the on this. Cars. I'm just really trying nope. to get into his mindset. I'm trying to get into his mindset and be like, okay, you know, like I would get the Mario All Stars for myself. I like, I would pay. Yeah. You know, those ratchet you games know. ain't rare. Hey, here, here <laughs> would pick up this lot. You know why? Because I gave him that Star Wars box. For the hey, game. there you go. Oh, uh, okay, all right. There you go. <laughs> so I, up I'd the Star Wars. Up, I would boost up the value of that game exactly <laughs> uh, stuff like that you know like or you know like even our marines our marines is not that bad i used to play that as a kid but that's like mm -hmm. a that's like a ten dollar game our marines right there on the 64 so i mean there's i haven't even heard of that game <laughs> yeah it's it's you know it's like uh it's not too bad man. it's pretty cool no mercy isn't no mercy coming up no mercy is pretty much the best wwf game ever basically it's garnered as one of the best it, it's a it's a sequel to WrestleMania 2000, which is one of the best at the time, and then they had this one come out that topped it. So, so okay. Phoenix Resale specifically is, and it's in his name. He's a reseller, um, yeah. and that's what I wanted to kind of you know just kind of say like, they're like Hyphy, you resell specifically, man. Like you know you collect, you collect, right? But you resell, and I have a lot of respect and a lot of props to you guys who can actually do that, man. And if you're in an area that you can do that, bro, because I can't do that here, not in the area that I live, because there's just I, maybe I just need to expand my knowledge on things to resell, but I wouldn't be able to make a living out of it here. Um, so uh, much props to you, Hyphy, man, because you find good stuff all the time. And 
you know, you, you get good, good, good items. But for Phoenix resale, I think there was a little bit of a confusion as, or concern, I guess, is to what his uh, complete collection for Switch. So what's the story behind this whole situation with him having a collection, bro? What did you guys see? What did you guys hear? So I follow this guy on, on Instagram. And so I see his stories once in a while. And then I saw a story probably a few, I don't know if it was a month ago or something, that he was actively searching for switches, like cer certain, like, you know, edition switches. And I was like, okay, this dude is trying to get a, get a switch collection, right? And then I follow some of his videos and I'd be reading some of the comments, like, when can we see your collection? When can we see your collection? So he puts it in his story, he puts it in his videos that he's gonna oh in time i'm gonna show you my collection so from this video from what i see is basically stuff that he picked up over that month or so of trying to get all the switches for this video so and okay he puts it up for sale so how's that collection exactly <laughs> so like just the day after this video came out i saw his story and each of the a lot of, i think half of these switches that we see right here were for sale and I'm like, so this is your collection or is this not your collection? And I, re I remember distinctly him trying to pick these up because he wanted it to be his collection. But then he said he's thinning them out. And I'm like, so you thin them out right, right after you premiered your shit. I'm like, this is not a collection, in my opinion. No, nah, because he's he's trying to, like, save himself from all the flack that he's been getting lately. And, and you guys know all the comments and stuff that he's been getting. People are like, this dude is like, he don't he don't care about the games or nothing like that, but he's acting like he do. So it's like pissing a lot of people off, basically. And then this whole video, he's just basically, um, he's just going over each switch and why he likes it and why he doesn't. Okay, everybody has their opinions to like what's good or not as a special edition switch. Um, but the, the thing that, that bothered me the most was that he, he, like he not only did he do this video but he did a, a, a another separate video like a tier like he would he would like rate each switch and like it wasn't just me you could see some of the comments like people are saying this is stupid like <laughs> 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 like, right. like can we see something else and like i see other videos that he puts and he says that he's a collector like he straight yeah. up said in his last video where he says earn 200 dollars a day selling video games he said as a collector yeah, as that's a why collector we're like, oh, i was like oh really video. now you watched my video <laughs> yeah I, I watched i watched this, i watched the shit i'm like yo man what is this like i i'm a reseller don't get me wrong i sell shit that i don't collect you know what i'm saying like i built a good amount of my stuff from reselling from buying shit and from trading shit mm. and there's stuff that I will not keep. I will not keep N Super Nintendo stuff unless it's complete in box. And that's I know it's going to... And uh, so that's going to be gone. Same thing with NES because I, I'm not busting out the NES system. <laughs> and um, I, will, I, will, I will keep anything from N64 and up uh, that I like. So I'm not keeping no filler, none of that junk. But this dude sells everything. And I don't know what he means by collect when he's basically selling the stuff that he just picked up like he straight up he straight up picked up all these stuff for the video and that's it like i can't respect that because you're straight capping on people right now and people are eating it up and i'm like yo what is going on like pe like he's pre he I'm, i don't mind that he resells he can he can be a reseller but don't pretend to be a collector just because you're trying to cater yeah. to the to the collector crowd because people right. can see through that like don't don't lie to folks man it's not it's not a good look like that's, that's how i feel about it i i'm gonna tell you straight i used to like this guy a lot straight from the beginning and i just went it just went downhill because not only did was like he faking being a collector but then his business practices as a reseller did not work well in my mindset because there's no way i could live off of that shit like yeah. no way I could be selling those type of games that he'd be selling even on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember like when, when, you know, we were first talking about all these videos, like I, I was like already ripping all of them because <laughs> for me, I was like, what the hell are they doing? You know, <laughs> you know, like me being from the Bay, like I think a lot of people that are from the Bay or like from Brooklyn, whatever like that, like they're, they're like used to the hustle, right? Yeah. So, 
we know hustle better than most people do, man. And so it's like, when I see certain practices, I'd be like, nah, you know, it, that ain't working. Like, I don't know how you're doing it, but it ain't working. Let me ask you this, guys. Would you guys spend 200K to earn 70? Right. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Like, where do I, I mean, I know he, he, uh, he, acu he accumulatively, he, he spent the 7K. It wasn't all at once. I get that. I mean, I get an initial investment, right? But I wouldn't even brag about 7K if I, I'm a 70K and yeah. put out that 200 like that. You know, it's nothing to brag about. Yeah. You know? yeah it's like, I, I, I've turned, I've, I've made 10 times profit so many times and I don't even brag about it. So it's like, why, you know? And then in this, in this video, like he's like showcasing each switch that he has in his collection <laughs> but is oh man like i don't know how to feel about it when it's not really your collection like how do you feel about that guys like people saying it's your collection but it's really not your collection like like people lie i don't know so it just is fake tubers yeah <laughs> So, you know, pe people like that fake tuber stuff, man. You know, 99% of the people in the world, they're sheep. They don't know what to think. You know, like if, if I got hella big and started going like, bam, 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 bam. This, this is the real way. This is how you do it. Blah, blah, blah. Everybody would be like, oh, let's jump on his stuff, man. It's just, you know, whoever is leading the market with what kind of stuff they can spew out. Everyone's just going to follow. I know that's going to piss a lot of people off, but. That's how it is, man. It's been like that since the beginning of time. <laughs> uh, it's such, such a shame. You always want to see real shit and like. It's hard, man. So especially on YouTube. You know, I, I've seen, I've seen. Okay, so I've seen Phoenix resell for a while as well. I, I would say like maybe a year, a year that I've been seeing Phoenix resell. And I know at one point he was really trying to shoot for the Dragon Quest um, Switch, and he got it, and that was his like thing. Like he really wanted to get the Dragon Quest uh, Switch. So I, I know he had a couple switches that he kept oops, that he kept for his collection. Um, but you're saying, bro, that he bought like more switches just for the video and then like afterwards sold them. Is that is that what? Yeah. That, well, remember at one point he got robbed and then they took out like 90 percent <laughs> of his switches and then he tried to rebuild his switches. But then so he rebuilt it. Get me. He rebuilt it. But then. He was adding extra ones because he wanted to have more than what he already had initially for the video. And the, the ones that he added that were extra to his collection, he put up for sale like the very next day. And I'm like, that to me was like, OK, you're you're not really collecting. So you made it your collection, even though it, like even the title says my complete special edition switch collection, my collection like bro yeah but like, you can't say that and be like oh i got it up for sale right now the next day i'm like yeah what the fuck and then he tried and like even with the words that he put I, like i'll send you guys like the video or something through email or something i, I recorded his story on instagram yeah and, and he, i saw he, and he, yeah. he has it up for like scalper prices too yeah and it's like he come on man. like he was trying to get like i don't know, like a kiosk or something or he didn't like he's selling to get something else or anything like that he just straight up like selling it or like all the extra i money. think he might be trying to sell it for what he paid for it or a little bit extra to cover how much he spent for it because this was an expensive video then yeah it's, it's, you know he bought it just for the he straight up bought it for the video okay so that's <laughs> okay so maybe See? that's i guess what we're getting at we're like is it more because we're thinking like he bought the switches specifically just to make the video saying that it was part of the collection and then it's not and it's just yeah that's fake that's fake that's fake that's shit fake. like <laughs> see even my dogs think it's fake <laughs> yeah. you know i'm trying to give like the benefit of the doubt here and everything you think like maybe there's <laughs> something or reason why you're calling it all of a sudden or like that but you know and and, the, and at the end of it guys like at the end of it People can just do whatever they want with their collection, really, honestly. Like, they can do whatever they want with their collection. And, but True. to be in a sense, kind of like, if it's kind of not malicious, but sneaky in a sense where you're trying to make a video, like, let's just say I make a video where I go to Goodwill and I take my Kuan with me inside of my, my jacket. <laughs> and then I freaking 
<laughs> put the coupon on the shelf of Goodwill and be like, oh, I found coupon at Goodwill. Kind of that, like, maybe. I, like, I know people do that shit. You know what I mean? Like that baiting, bait, you know, tricking and stuff like that. Then that's not cool. Then that's something that, yeah, I do kind of have an issue with. But at the end of it, people, I guess, are just going to do whatever they want to do. But yeah, man, I, I, yeah, that's kind of a different because situation. It's like, I think, I think this stuff all started. Remember when those prank videos when everyone was doing pranks? Oh, yeah. Like, now there's fake pranks. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, it got to the point where everyone was faking them. Yeah. So that's what we have gotten, man, because it's dried out. There ain't shit out there. And so now people got like, it's going to get worse, man. People are going to start faking those videos to the point like it's going to get bad. Yeah, that's that's good. Yep. All right, guys. So we gave our honest opinions on some of the content creators that we watch and kind of their ideas behind our thinking of how we collect. And the good thing is that, you know, you know, Hyphy, Gact and myself, we all kind of have this mixture of ideas and we kind of share them amongst each other respectfully, just the same way that we respectfully give our critique over, let's just say Retro Rig or Phoenix Resale and point out things that we do like or don't like. That's just kind of the way it goes. Um, and the same thing can be said about our channel. And hopefully I want, you know, Hyphy Gold and, and Gak Cognac to give me their honest opinion about my channel because I have a lot to work on. And I, I welcome critique respectfully uh, for stuff like that on my channel as well. So these are just kind of ideas that we have about other content creators that we watch. And I think we're going to continue doing this with some of the other uh, YouTubers, you know, and see what we can learn from it and see what maybe um, we can critique respectfully out of it as well. So any guys, any last words that you guys want to mention? I mean, like, I don't want this to be like a completely negative thing. Uh, I mean, there are people that like pick up good shit and like they like, you know, they're they're 100 percent real about what they do. I mean, like I do follow certain other other certain channels that are really dope um, that have some good pickups and like they don't try to cap on folks. But I mean, uh, for the culture, for the culture, bro, like I, I don't like disrespecting the culture, like as a reseller and collector, I can't disrespect the the, the gaming culture. I'm like I'm not disrespecting the reselling culture either, but still it's it's just odd whenever i see things that like that are not truthful and i'll i'll call them out <laughs> that's that's a good business pan man right there man you know <laughs> i mean that's that's what i'm all about is just everyone knows like if you go down to all my comment sections you'll see oh you the realest motherfucker i know like <laughs> like that's why i'm watching your stuff like i clicked it because man you give no you know you know give no fucks and, and you, you say what you need to say blah blah blah, blah. and so it's it is a breath of fresh air amongst every other guy that's kind of like you know trying to do it this way or even even if they're trying to be more more friendly about it you know what i mean but like for me as as an individual you know i i grew up just not giving a damn you know what i mean i never cared what people talked about or this and that so why would i start now so like for me i, I would rather watch uh people that are more genuine um people that have individuality because there's there's a million people i can watch you know there's there's a thousand people out there that i can give my time to and and for a person to actually sit down and and put in i don't know like 15 30 minutes even like an hour video right into what you got that's a lot of time out of the day yeah. you know <laughs> so it's it's a good thing to actually especially if you're going to decide all right i'm a reseller but i'm going to make videos you got you got two responsibilities you got to be an upholding you know businessman and at the same time because you're making videos for the people you gotta be you know you gotta be genuine and you gotta have some type of you know individuality personality and all that stuff because like i said there's gonna be people like me they're gonna see right through it so mm -hmm. that's, that's my tip to some of the people that are you know watching <laughs> awesome man great yeah. stuff man. so i mean we'll we'll continue this uh, conversation and we'll go over some other youtubers and i think there's you know uh youtubers that are not really put on the spotlight that really deserve it i mean there's a couple that we can talk about um people that you guys see that i see 
um stuff like that so um all right guys so we appreciate you guys watching hopefully you guys like the video some of you guys might not like it but you know that's kind of how it rolls sometimes but either way guys um all right we'll see you on the next time next video peace later